Hello there, this is Kim. Welcome to Porch In It. You are back with me in South Florida. We are home now and we are going through the Bible in a year. And today is day 100 and, or 200, I'm sorry, 293. So we're going to Matthew 16 and Mark 8. So let's pray and, and just ask the Lord to show us. Lord, we just thank you that you'll show us your word Show us things you want us to hear and things that you want me to expound on that are led by you only. Holy Spirit, I want you to speak through my mouth. I want you to take hold of the reins of my mouth and speak. Bring life, bring truth, bring revelation to your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, uh, Matthew 16, let's start. Matthew 16 and then Mark 8, we'll go over to for, for the day of 293rd day. I'm reading through the Amplified. So, Matthew 16, now the Pharisees and Sadducees came up to Jesus and they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied to them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and has a gloomy and threatening look. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you can't interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and morally unfaithful generation craves a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Then he left them and went away. When the disciples reached the other side of the sea, they found that they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Be careful and on your guard against the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves about it, saying, It is because we did not bring any bread. But Jesus, aware of this, asked, Why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? O oh, you men, how little trust you have in me, how little faith. Do you not yet discern, perceive, and understand? Do you not understand the five loaves of the five thousand and how many small hand baskets you gathered? Nor the seven loaves for the four thousand and how many large provision baskets you took up? How is it that you fail to understand that I was not talking to you about bread, but beware of the leaven, the ferment of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Then they discerned that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Jesus went into the region of Gesera, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they answered, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you yourselves say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus answered him, you can highlight that part. Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are you, Simon, bar Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, a large Peter, a large piece of rock. And on this rock, Petra, excuse me, a huge rock like Gibraltar, I will build my church in the gates of Hades. The powers of the infernal region shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you, whatever you bind on earth declares to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth must be loosed in heaven. And he sternly and strictly charged and warned the disciples to tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth, Jesus began clearly to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the high priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised from death. Then Peter took him aside to speak to him privately and began to reprove and charge him sharply, saying, God forbid, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned away from Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, you are, my, you are in my way. 
an offense and a hindrance and a snare to me for you are minding what for you are minding what partakes not of the nature and quality of God but of man then Jesus said to his disciples if anyone desires to be my disciple let him deny himself disregard lose sight of and forget himself and take up his cross and follow me take up his cross and follow me cleave to me conform wholly to my example for whoever is bent on saving his life here shall lose it and whoever loses his life his comfort and security here for my sake shall find it in everlasting life for will will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life his blessed life in the kingdom of God or what would a man give as an exchange for his blessed life in the kingdom of God. For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will render account and reward every man in according with what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not see or taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his glory. So let's highlight this. Um, Whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. And that's in verse 25. So that we are to be unselfish and only wanting what God has, only wanting to speak what he speaks, only wanting to hear what he says and speak it, hear what he does and do it, and be led by him and not let ourselves be so... Oh, our self. We want we don't want self, but we want God. We want God. So that's that's the main thing here. And then um Mark let's go to Mark eight. And this is yeah, Mark eight. Ready? In those days the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said unto them, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way, for diverse of them came from afar. And his disciples answered him, From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves. He gave thanks, broke them, and gave to the disciples and set before them and they did and did set them before the people and they had a few s small fish and and he well wait a minute I'm reading out of the regular King James here now I'm going back to the amplified he praised God and gave thanks and asked him to bless them he ordered that those he should set before them and they ate and were satisfied, and they took upon seven basketfuls of broken pieces left over. And there was 4,000 people, and he dismissed them. And at once he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmathua, or Mag Magdala. The Pharisees came and began to argue with and question him, demanding from him a sign and a testing miracle from heaven to test him. And he groaned and sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation demand a sign? Positively, I say to you, no sign shall be given this generation. And he went away and left them. And getting into the boat again, he departed to the other side. Now they had, and that was because of their own faith. They're just not believing. And so he's like, now a sign isn't going to be given you because you're not even believing. And he went away and left them. And getting in the boat again, he departed to the other side. Now they had forgotten to bring bread and they had only one loaf with them on the boat. And Jesus charged and admonished them saying, look out, keep on guard and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of the Herod and the Herodians. And they discussed it and reasoned with one another, if it is because we have no bread and be, being aware, Jesus said to them, why are you reasoning and saying, is it because we have no bread? Do you not yet discern or understand? Are your hearts a state of hardness? 
Having eyes, do you not see? Having ears, do you not hear and perceive and understand the sense of what is being said? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the thousand, five, the five thousands, how many basket full of broken pieces did you take up? They said 12. And then the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many basketfuls of broken pieces did you take up? And they said seven. And he kept repeating, do you not yet understand? And they came to Bethsaida and brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he caught the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him and asked, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. And when he put his hands on his eyes again, the man looked intently and he was restored and saw everything distinctly. And he sent him away to his house telling, do not enter the village or tell anyone there. And Jesus went on with his disciples onto the village of Sisera, Philippi, and on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist, others, Elijah, but others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do yourselves say that I am? Peter says, replied, you are the Christ, the anointed one. And he charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the son of man must of necessity suffer many things and be tested and disapproved and rejected by elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be put to death and after three days rise again and he said this freely and peter took him by the hand and led him aside and then began to rebuke him but turning around and seeing his disciples he rebuked peter saying get behind me saying jesus said get behind me saying for you are do not have in mind the intent on promoting what God's will is for what pleases men. You are not on God's side, but that of men. Because he was saying, no, you cannot do this, Peter was saying. But God was saying, Jesus said, re he rebuked Satan. He said, no, get behind me. You don't have in mind what God's will is. And Jesus called the throng with his disciples, said, if anyone intends to come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whoever wants to save his life will lose it and whoever gives up his life for my sake and the gospels will save it for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life right what is a gain if you forfeit your life. For what can a man give in exchange for compensation or ransom in return for his blessed life in the eternal kingdom of God? For whoever is ashamed here and now of me and my words of this adulterous, unfaithful, and pre, and pre mentally sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. So we are not to be ashamed of God. We're to be the, maybe we're the outcast, maybe we're the minority, which we are. But you know what? When we stand for righteousness and for God, he sees that and he will bless us and he will give us favor and he will shine his grace upon us. Favor will come as a shield round about you. Uh, Psalm 5 verse 12 talks about favor of God come as a shield around you but you speak and you stand strong for Jesus and for his righteousness and for the righteousness of God the people of God you stand for righteousness so Lord we ask you to give us boldness holy boldness to stand up strong for you to stand and make your name great and mighty that when the enemy comes in that we stand and we don't let the enemy push us back because <coughs> Even if we are a minority, even if we're the only one in the room, Lord, we stand for righteousness. You will give us favor as a shield round about us, as it says in Psalm 5. And so, Father, we want to be on your side. We want to be lifting up the name of Jesus because you've done so much. You've done everything, everything for us. You've done so much. You've done everything for us. You've given your life. You've given Jesus your life, his life for us, 
Jesus gave his life and God sent his only son and the Holy Spirit now lives inside of us and all we need to do is stand strong in faith be the minority be the bold one and say no we stand for righteousness not in a wrong way but in a loving way in Jesus name we pray amen and we just came from uh, North North Carolina and we had gone, this is just a couple little stories I'm going to tell you quickly, but we had gone into the, um, uh, the, uh, what was it? It was a, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It was a, a craft type, um, it's, uh, where, where you go in and you walk through and we were doing good there. The people were loving us. We were talking to different ones that did the crafts that, you know, and then we came upon at the top of it. We walked to the top and there was a lady in the office. She comes out and she hands us, a, you know, some masks. And she says, would you please put these on? Um, and we said, no, we don't wear them. And she said, well, I would like you to wear them. Otherwise, you're not supposed to be here. And so we said, well, then we'll just gladly walk out. But we, you know, we don't want to make a fuss we'll just walk out and she said okay I don't want you to walk out I would rather you take one but whatever you have to do you do and we stood our ground and we did it in a gentleness and a love in a way that was loving toward the lady and um loving it you know and giving ourselves to what God has called us to do stand our ground be strong be bold not in a way that, that's unloving, but in a loving way. Just standing who, who we know Christ is inside of us. He doesn't want us to wear these masks. It's not godly. It's not right. And so I'm just, I just praise God because we're free in this. And then we went into the airport and we were so free. We didn't have to wear them at all. We only wore them when we got on the plane or when we went through the, the little, you know, where they have to check your bags and stuff. But nothing was really said until we went through the bags or, of course, when we went on the plane, we did it. When we were getting off the plane today, there was a lady who said, could you please pull it up on your nose? So we were like, okay, whatever. This is the last two minutes that we're getting off. But we have been standing our ground in loving, gentle way. Just like the scripture says, as we were reading right now, um, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous, sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in his glory of his Father and the holy angel, angels. So, and then right before that, for what can a man give as an exchange, a compensation, a ransom for his blessed life in the eternal kingdom. And really, what can we give? We can give boldness. We can be strong. We can stand our ground knowing this is what God has told us and shown us. We're convicted and can, can it's like a conviction basically that we're not gonna put these masks on. We're not, of course, we're not gonna take the shots, but we're not gonna put these masks on because they're, we're doing it as unto the Lord. We're, we're doing it in a way that's loving and tender and gentle. And that's the way God wants us to be. He wants us to be free. But he also wants us to stand our ground in love. And if you're doing it in love, there's nothing like it. That you know, God will bless you. He'll shine his grace on you. He will cover you as a shield round about you like in Psalm 5. And you don't have anything to fear. And as you are gentle and peaceful and just do, you know, sometimes I'll walk into a place and they'll say, could you put it on? We'll say, no, I'll just walk out. I won't deal with this. So I, I basically give my place, you know, if you want me here, I'll be here. But if you, if you want me to wear this, I'm not going to shop here. I'm not going to come here. I'm not going to be here, but it's not like in an anger. It's not in a frustration. It's in a loving, bold way that I know God loves me. God loves you. And I boldly stand the truth. And I believe this will help others. You know, and as we walked out of the art place, it was, we were, we were like, wow, the lady was so sweet. The way she was doing it was so sweet. She wasn't pushing it on us, but she still was basically saying we can't be there without the mask. So we just decided, well, we're going to leave, we're going to leave then and we'll walk out and we'll, we're not going to stay here under things, under what they want. If they want 
everybody would wear masks and we would just won't stay here. But if it's okay that we stay here, that's a different story. So basically, and the same thing happened in the plane. Nobody said anything. The only time we were ever spoken of is on the way up to Carolina. Um, they said, please put them on while we were going through the, through the, uh, you know, check-in. And then t today, as we were coming back, we put them on quickly before we went through check-in because we figured. And of course, when we got on the plane, we put them on too. But while we were getting off the plane, that was like, the lady was just like, oh, could you please put them up above your nose, you know, on your nose. So we were like, all right, we'll do it. But we did it for two minutes, but we just, and then we, as soon as we walked off, we took them off and that's how we, we do everything. And, um, my husband and I have been doing that. And I just really thank God for a godly husband that will stand the, stand boldly for the Lord. And there was a woman who actually even said to him in the line, who was another, you know, person like us, you know, what are you doing? You can't have no mask on. And we were like, um, we can, we're doing what we know to do and we don't need a mother to tell us what to do and so basically we were letting her know that her way is not the right way and if you want to stay away from us that's fine but you don't have to tell us what to do and so God is the same way he wants us to just be bold to stand for the truth and the righteousness of God in love and when we're in love things will change people will fall into place People will recognize that, hey, maybe there is something that I can do different here. Maybe I am just listening to the crowd and I'm not listening to God. You know, it'll help spurn people. It'll help people to go, okay, I can stand strong too, even with the minority. So be blessed today. Remember, your words are your way to victory. And I'll see you tomorrow on Fortunate. Thanks for coming.